The world of sports is a cabinet of curiosities filled with heart-stopping moments, inspiring feats of human spirit, and bizarre traditions. Imagine a track superstar who defies injury and time, shattering four world records in less than an hour. Or a legendary baseball player whose secret weapon wasn't a lucky bat, but a plate of chicken before every game. Picture the longest match in tennis history, so grueling it had to be spread over three days. And just when you think you've heard it all, there comes a tale from the moon, involving an astronaut and a yo. Oh, but we'll get to that. Stay tuned, you wouldn't want to miss this. What's up my incredible and inquisitive folks? Ready for another deep dive into the world of curiosities? I'm your host Caesar, and joining me is my brilliant partner in unraveling mysteries, Sonia Gumarais. Hey there, beautiful people. Remember, we're here on the Curiosity Wonderland, unveiling fascinating facts you won't believe. So hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified every time we drop a new episode. Get ready for an incredible journey, folks. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with a jaw-dropping sports fact. Have you ever wondered what you could achieve in 45 minutes? Hmm, might be able to finish an episode of my favorite show? Well, Jesse Owens, the track superstar, once exceeded all possible expectations by breaking four world records within that same time frame. Whoa, four records in 45 minutes? That's insane. Absolutely. And what's more amazing is that Owens did this while he was injured. He'd slipped and fallen down a set of stairs only five days before his historic performance. Wait, he achieved this feat while he was injured? That's unbelievable. Indeed it is. Against his coach's advice, Owens insisted on competing in the Big Ten Conference Track Championships. He participated in the 100-yard dash, long jump, 200-meter dash, and 200-meter low hurdles, setting world records in all of them. That's dedication on a whole new level. The resilience and determination, it's truly inspiring. Absolutely. It's a lesson for all of us. What we can accomplish in a short amount of time if we truly dedicate ourselves is astounding. Let's slide into another interesting sports fact. Ever heard of Wade Boggs, one of Major League Baseball's greatest hitters? Oh, the chicken man? Exactly. Boggs was notoriously superstitious. He ate chicken before every single game for 18 years of play. And interestingly enough, he successfully got on base at least once in 85% of those games. That's incredible. It seems like his chicken diet worked out pretty well for him. It did indeed. His superstitions didn't stop there. Boggs woke up at the exact same time on every game day, ran his pregame sprints at exactly 7.17 p.m. every single night, and even drew the Hebrew symbol for life in the dirt before stepping to the plate. His consistency was remarkable. Speaking of consistency and superstitions, did you know that Turkish soccer player Rekber Rustu always wore the same lucky skullcap throughout his career? It's said that he believed his skullcap was a charm that brought him good fortune during matches. That's quite fascinating. It seems athletes and their superstitions are a story all on their own. Now, ready for a game of endless tennis? The longest professional tennis match in sports history lasted for more than 11 hours and spanned three different days. 11 hours? That's longer than a full workday. Must have been an incredible game to watch. Turning our focus back to this epic tennis match, it lasted exactly 11 hours and five minutes and was spread out across three days due to lighting and scoreboard-related issues at London's All England Club. In the end, John Isner won the match with scores of 6-4, 3-6, 6-7, 7-6, 70-60-8. Wait a minute, did you say 7068? That's crazy. It is indeed. It's unheard of in professional tennis. The match started on the afternoon of June 22nd, 2010. They managed to complete four sets that afternoon, but by evening, the sun was setting and officials had to halt the match. It was scheduled to continue the following day. This is like a saga, really. These two players must have been exhausted. Absolutely. But the story doesn't end there. Each player held their serves in an unbelievably long fifth set. Then they had to face another hiccup. The electronic scoreboard stopped working when the fifth set was tied at 47 all. It hadn't been programmed to keep score beyond that point in any match. 
So they were literally off the charts, huh? That's something. Yes, they were. The match had to continue on a third day. Finally, in the 137th game of the fifth set, John Isner broke Nicholas Mahout's serve, and in the following game, he held on to his serve to claim victory. The fifth set alone took over eight hours to play. Moving from the world of tennis to baseball, let's discuss a historic moment that took place on September 1, 1971. On this day, the formidable Pittsburgh Pirates fielded a starting nine with only black and Latino players, which was the first time this had ever happened in Major League history. That must have been a significant milestone in the sports world. Indeed, it was. And while there were only 11,278 fans present to witness this historic event, it marked the beginning of a change. The Pirates went on to win the World Series that October, establishing themselves as the best team in the big leagues. There's something to be said about breaking barriers and achieving greatness. Absolutely. Speaking of Pittsburgh, here's another fascinating fact about the city. Pittsburgh is the only city in America where all three of their major professional sports teams share the same colors. The Pittsburgh Pirates, the Steelers, and the Penguins all sport black and yellow as their primary colors. That's a unique show of unity, isn't it? It is. The choice of colors nods to the city's history. These were the colors in the coat of arms used by the Pitt family, in honor of whom General John Forbes named the city. The colors were then formalized for the city when it was officially chartered in 1816. And they've stuck ever since. That's a fantastic blend of history and sports. It's exciting to see that some traditions carry on in these modern times. Now let's switch gears from the unity of sports colors to a rather unique collaboration. In 1943, during the height of World War II, both the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Philadelphia Eagles faced a dire situation. They had lost so many men to military service that neither team could field a full club. That's a harsh reality of war impacting even the world of sports. However, they found a solution. Instead of operating independently, the two clubs decided to become one in the fall of 1943, merging into a new team known as the Steagles. The Steagles? That's very creative. It may not have been the most glamorous mascot, but it served its purpose. The two coaching staffs had to work out their differences for the combined season. And guess what? They won. Well, not a championship, but the Steagles finished the year with a record of five wins, four losses, and one tie. That's a decent record considering the circumstances. Absolutely. And it's interesting to note that it was the first time the Eagles ever had more wins than losses since being founded in 1933. So in a way, the merge proved to be a good luck charm for them. Now, let's dive into the world of Major League Baseball umpires. You might be surprised to know that these professionals have to adhere to very strict uniform requirements. Really, how strict are we talking? Well, it goes beyond just the visible elements like the shirts and shoes. Major League Baseball actually has a rule that umpires must wear black underwear during games. Black underwear? That's oddly specific. Is there a reason for that? Yes, there is. The rule exists to cover up any potential embarrassing wardrobe malfunction. If an umpire's pants ripped mid-game, for instance, black underwear would help them remain reasonably covered up. That's a level of preparation I hadn't considered. Anything else unusual about umpires? Well, how about this? Way back in the early days of baseball, umpires used to sit in padded rocking chairs during games. You're kidding! They actually had chairs on the field? Yes, they did. These chairs were removed in the late 1850s, but the term rocking chair still exists in baseball umpiring today, just in a different sense. The third base umpire has relatively few calls to make, so they refer to that position as the rocking chair gig. So, in a way, the rocking chair is still a part of baseball, just not in the literal sense. That's right. It's a little nod to the history of the game within the modern context. Now, let's take a leap back in time to the early 1900s. Would you believe me if I told you that the tug of war was once an Olympic event? Really? The game we used to play at carnivals and school events was an Olympic sport? Yes, indeed. From 1900 through 1920, it was included in five different Olympiads. 
The competitions were fierce, with long and intense tugs among competitors. The rules during that time even allowed countries to enter more than one tug-of-war team in each competition. That must have been quite a spectacle. And also, it means a country could win multiple medals in this category then? Exactly. In 1904, three different U.S. clubs took home the gold, silver, and bronze medals at the Olympic Games. All three medals, that's domination. Oh, it doesn't end there. Four years later, in 1908, the British followed suit. Three British clubs won all three medals in the Olympics. Unfortunately, tug-of-war was discontinued as an event after the 1920 Games. Well, that's a part of Olympic history I wasn't aware of. It sure would be interesting to see it make a comeback. Indeed. Now let's move from the field to the moon. In 1971, astronaut Alan Shepard, a part of the Apollo 14 crew, took his love for golf to a whole new level, literally. Wait, you're not going to tell me he played golf on the moon, are you? That's precisely what happened. Shepard, a huge golf fan, thought it would be great to take his favorite game to the moon. The moment when he took out a golf ball and club to take a shot on the lunar surface was broadcast around the world. Now that's a golf shot that's truly out of this world. The truly remarkable part about Shepard's lunar golfing was that NASA had no idea he was going to do it. He certainly surprised space exploration officials just as much as the rest of America when he took out his golf club to take a swing. Now that's a surprise move. I imagine it would have been quite a sight to see a golf ball flying across the lunar landscape. Absolutely. This surprise move made history. Even today, golf is the only sport ever to be played on the moon. And given our current knowledge about space travel and exploration, that's a distinction that will probably hold for a very, very long time. It's incredible how sports have made their mark, not just on Earth, but on the moon as well. It speaks to how deeply ingrained these games are in our cultures. I can't wait to see where they take us next. What a journey we've had today. From Jesse Owens' spectacular record-breaking performance just days after a fall, to Wade Boggs' chicken superstitions and the relentless tennis duel at Wimbledon, we've explored the historic milestones in baseball, the unity of colors in Pittsburgh sports, and a unique fusion of teams due to World War II. Not forgetting the peculiar dress code for baseball umpires, the old school setup with rocking chairs, and the extinct Olympic tug of war event. And who could forget our golf expedition to the moon? Indeed, the sports world truly is filled with strange stories and interesting facts that entertain and inspire us. It's a testament to the human spirit and its capacity to achieve, adapt, and sometimes be downright quirky. Well said. And remember folks, sports may take us to the moon, but it's the journey that keeps us hooked. Absolutely. Now, to our incredible audience, if you've enjoyed this episode of Curiosity Wonderland, please show us some love, blast that like button, drop us a comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to share this episode with your friends. Let's spread these fascinating sports stories far and wide. Thanks for joining us on this journey through some of the most jaw-dropping sports facts. Stay curious, stay informed, and until the next episode, take care. Goodbye, everyone, and keep exploring. Our fascinating deep dive today comes courtesy of an article titled 10 Jaw-Dropping Sports Facts You Might Have Never Heard Before on Listverse, penned by Selma Angelo and published on December 17th, 2023. You can find the full URL in the video description if you're keen on exploring more. Now it's time for me to sign off. <laughs>